Here I am at Promethean Planet, and I'm going to give you a brief orientation of this site. Um, you may, when you go to Promethean Planet for the first time, you may not see exactly what I see because this homepage is constantly changing. Um, just notice that you can sign in with a free account that you created in this area. Or you also, if you have a Facebook account, can sign in with your username and password from Facebook. I'm going to do that right now. Ignore this crazy JavaScript error. Um, it has nothing to do with Promethean Planet, but it does um, have to be an annoyance in my life right now. I don't know. I need to probably update some software. All right, so I am signed in with my Facebook account, and there's just a couple areas. I'm not going to show you every area in here, or this would not be brief. I do want to hover. Hover means that I'm just, um, I didn't click. I'm just putting my cursor over professional development. And notice that you could click on active tips. Those are video tutorials created by a very exceptional teacher named Scott Caulfield, who has worked a lot with our district. So um, know that those are available to you. But in particular, I want to hover over resources and show you that you can search by a variety of ways. In particular, you can search for lessons. Those are actually specific flip charts. Resource packs, which are a collection of objects that can go into your resource browsers or web links. You can also search by grade level or subject area. I'm just going to click on lesson so that I'm going to the page where I would be looking for specific flip charts. And um, when I go to this page, I'm just going to see a bunch of them. You can see, if you look at this area right here, that there are 9,400 flip charts in Promethean Planet. Right now, they're sorted by the published date. So the most recent ones that have been uploaded are first in your list. You can change and look um, sort these by title, but if there's almost 10,000 flip charts, realistically, you're going to need to filter down and get a shorter list. So for instance, if I'm teaching first grade, I could maybe put a check mark in the age six to eight area, and then I'm gonna click on the filter button. It's right here, because what that's gonna do is that's gonna take the total list and it's going to shorten it down. So now I'm really only looking at 3,800 flip charts. Well, I need to flip. I need to um, filter that down even more. So now I want to look. Hmm. You know, I want to do a lesson for students in that age, just having to do with math. So I choose math, and I'm going to filter it down. And now we're getting somewhere. Okay, now we're looking at 1,000 flip charts that are related to math. So I can start to look um, at maybe the, um, the names of these flip charts and just pick a few to find if I can find individual pages on the flip charts or actual entire flip charts that I could use in my lessons. Don't always need to start from scratch. So that's how you search. Um, through the filtering technique for something like a lesson. But in your assignment, you're going to download a resource pack. So I'm going to deselect the lesson, and I'm going to choose resource pack, which is really a collection of objects that can go into your resource browser. And in this case, maybe I want to look for um, math symbols. So I could choose math and... Then I'm going to click on filter. And this time it's going to bring up resource packs, which are very different than um, the actual flip charts themselves because these are really collections of objects. So what I do here is I kind of scan through and take a look at what we have. And if I'm teaching primary grades, I might find number animations to be some resources I'd like to have in my browser. So if I go to this, I can read the description over here of what that resource pack is. And I can look to see how many people downloaded it over here. And I have the download button. And lastly, you may want to peek to this area right here to see where it gets installed because that will help you to find it, which seems to be the, um, the biggest trouble 
when importing a resource pack is just finding where in that resource browser that stuff ended up going. So I suggest that you definitely look at all of the language on this page before you go ahead and download. Keep in mind when you download a resource pack or, or a flip chart, some of you have your computer set up to download that file to your desktop and other people, I'm guessing you'll find it in your downloads folder. Um, if you can't find it in one of those two places, you're gonna need to get help from tech integration specialist, media specialist, your tech support specialist. Good luck.